Hello, welcome back to the Halion 6 tutorial series. Today we're talking about getting samples into Halion and mapping them. And the example that I've chosen to use is uh, I want to record this Juno keyboard. I want to get some samples in so that I can process them inside Halion. How are we going to do that? So first, thing, first things first, I'll just throw that out of the way. So that's my, that's my sound that I want to sample. In order to do that, we need to go up to this little button up here, activate sidechain, and drop it down. And we need to add a sidechain input, and we get all of the outputs that Cubase has available to us. So if I wanted to record my vocals, I would choose vocal. Choose Juno 106. That's now active. So that's now an available input source for me to select. So let's have a look at the various options available to us to, to get samples into Halion. So Auto Next, uh, we're going to use this because what's, what it's going to do is it's going to record a sample uh, using a threshold, a start threshold and a stop threshold. And you can see I've set them to reasonable levels to start with. Minus 30, minus 50, completely, that, that's, going to, that's going to do the job. So it's going to record each note that we play on the keyboard. But every time it stops with that note, it's going to auto increment to the next key so that we can just choose, we can play these keys sequentially and it's going to map the entire synthesizer for us very, very quickly. Destination layer we wanted to record, we're going to basically import the uh, samples into program one. If I actually, if I create a layer, then that becomes available to us as a destination layer. Notice we haven't actually created a sample zone. The, the sample zones are going to get generated by the sampler itself. Mapping, for every key that I play, if I chose as played, every key that I played, it would choose that one. But we're going to choose white keys. And so we're just going to basically go up the white keys recording those samples. And I'm going to say fill gaps fill centered which means that the key the black keys that I don't play it's going to expand those samples those notes that I do in order to fill any gaps and we are good to go if I turn record arm on and we've already you need to select the the keyboard that's the the, the track that's going to generate the the output so select Juno 106 that's already done and away we go So wait until the uh, stop threshold gets triggered. And then it'll tell you what the next key is going to be. So as soon as I hit G, it says the next one's going to be A. Are you ready? Hit the A. And then the B. And we'll just do one more. We'll finally do a C4. Now that's it. So let's have a look what it's done. It's created eight sample zones. It's put them all inside the layer because I told it that's where the destination was. If we go over and have a look at our options, this is where all of those samples will get recorded. So it's currently recording them into my kind of central documents folder. You could instead choose to uh, record them directly into the project folder. If there were sounds that you were only going to use in this project, then you've got everything uh, collected together. And here it's all pretty straightforward. Um, audio settings for your bit depth and format and all those kind of good things. You get to choose some uh, basic properties for the recording of each zone. And this one's quite important. Auto normalize, auto -normalize uh, I always have on. And it basically just sets everything, you know what normalize does, it sets it to zero dB. So you're not gonna get clip anything, but it's gonna set each sample as reasonably loud as it can. So if you've got velocity sensitivity on your keyboard and you play some notes slightly quieter than others, then it'll correct for those kinds of things. And we've auto trimmed silence away. So we're just going to get the sample. Now I've just realized I've 
gone through all of that explanation and I didn't actually tell you to go to the load rec tab and engage the recorder. That's where all of these options are. Sorry about that. So now that we've recorded the sounds in, let's have a look what we've got. First things first, select our Hallian track. We don't want to, it's so easy you do this. You, you record your samples in and you go, oh, that sounds good. They're really great samples. And it's still playing the Juno. We can prove this. Let's just throw the Juno away. Switch to the Hallian. Schoolboy error. Did you see what I did? I just pressed the note on the keyboard expecting to play the Hallian sound and nothing came out. Can you see why? Not activated the slot. There we go. So there's my C3. That's the, the, the root note that has been mapped here. So now these are the samples we've just recorded. Let's nip in and uh, quickly set some release time for the layer. And that's it. We're not going to do any more editing on the sound itself. We've just sampled a Juno 106. Let's have some respect. Okay, so now we've clicked on the mapping tab. So let's have a bit of a look at what's gone on here. The first note that we sampled was C3. And the first note that we can read up here is D3. Well, that's because C3 occupies this note and everything below because we filled gaps and that was the lowest key. Every key that we play below C3 is just playing that sample. Then we've got the D3 that we recorded here and it's mapped that down to C sharp 3. Uh, E3 has been mapped across two notes, blah blah blah. This A3 here only occupies a single note because the, it's being covered by the other two on, on each side of it. And then C4, which is the highest sample we played, that covers all the way up to the top of the keyboard. Obviously, the higher away from the key center we go, we're going to get, you know, munchkinization and all those kinds of things. If you were doing this seriously, you would map the entire keyboard. If you really want to go to town, there's absolutely nothing stopping you sampling every single note. Now, for the purpose of demonstrating actually getting a sample into the system, that's pretty much all we need to know. These uh, options over here have got all sorts of variants to them. Instead of using audio threshold, you can use MIDI, MIDI on and MIDI off. If I did that, if I was recording this Juno uh, 106 synth that I did, and I used note on and note off, I would lose all of the release tail of the synth. It would literally just record the, the raw note. But in different situations, let's say you're dealing with something that has no release time, then note on and note off would be you know perfectly acceptable. Manual, just press record and it'll start sampling immediately and you can do whatever you want. There's no threshold limits to you. All of these different mapping options are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, fixed, all get mapped to the same key, chromatic, clearly black keys. Speaks for itself. You can set this next key value. Once you've done this kind of build-up thing, it will stick. That next key value will stick. So if you want to go back to C3 and start again, remember that. And if you're literally just recording a single sample, then there's no reason to have any of this auto incrementing business. Having said all of that, now that we're in and we've got some notes that we can look at in our mapping table, I'm actually going to throw all of this away. And I'll load up um, a pre preset sample from inside Hallian to show you the craziness that you can get to. So this is an entire orchestra. Now, when I play a really soft note and a loud note, we're playing different samples and we're playing lots of different samples. So let's really uh, hone in on this C3 and try to figure out what's going on in here and all the various options available to us. The first thing that you might note is that it's really difficult to actually tell what's going on. When I click, I just clicked, single clicked there, and it did some crazy stuff. It's basically saying you've just selected multiple samples. What do you want to do about it? 
if I click that little zone here it it kind of you know breaks out in a different direction it's really kind of difficult when you're dealing with a very big um, sample library like this to actually make sense of what's going on so one trick that I've learned is that if I want to see what's going on on a single key the first thing that I'll do is click somewhere else and I've completely deselected this key and now if I right click and have a look at assign zones these are all the samples that are mapped to C3 now if I choose the top one in the list you see how it's drawn this it's actually orange believe it or not it's drawn this box around that first sample let's have a look at the second sample brass unison it's now chosen a different zone this fella up here you can see here it is select it go into the zone sorry sample page that's what that sounds like so you can go down auditioning each of these sounds in turn so let's let's choose the next one as the as our final example automatically jumps to the the sample in question and let's look at some of the data that's available to us for this sample so we've, we can see that the the key range is a2 to c3 and that accords with what we can see on the keyboard there's a2 there's c3 the velocity range is from 96 to 127 so we're only going to hear this sound when we actually hit that velocity range at quieter you can see the uh, velocity bar on the left hand side telling us how hard we've hit the key we can see that the root key for this sound is actually A sharp 2 so if I play that then over in the sample page that's the component that we're hearing when we hit the key we're hearing multiple samples anything that happens to be mapped in that range we can pick this sample up and do whatever we want with it so here's a cool little trick if I press the control key down and click C3 and hold C3 down as well plays the note sequentially and where I press on the key if I press right up at the top of the key here and right down at the bottom of the key so it will play at that velocity level across the keyboard control now it's playing all of those notes at 52 if I click control and alt plays 10 different variants of each note it's a really excellent way of auditioning the keyboard and hearing what it's doing at different velocity levels if I'm scrolling through the program tree and select a note uh, I'll have to zoom out to see this it's telling me where that note is and then we can zoom in and see what else is going on over there double click on the note zoom in extreme mode double click come back out again if you have multiple zones selected simultaneously like we clearly do here if I drag it will resize them all control Z will always undo these operations single click away if I just select that note on its own there it is selected and highlighted in orange it's this one down here highlighted in orange click it now we've got a red box around it saying it's the selected zone and now if we resize that's the only zone that will get edited so this is how you choose your, your keyboard ranges and your velocity ranges you've also got a whole host of mapping features in the program tree itself most of this replicates the functionality that we've got in the graphical editor for instance here is the fill gaps if I had sampled when I did the samples I set, I set uh, fill gaps centered but if I didn't and I had uh, empty spaces in the samples this is where you can choose how you want to fill those gaps the final uh, cool little thing I can show you if I just get rid of this get back to a completely empty bus again create a slot create a layer 
import samples. Here in Hellion 6 recordings are those um, Juno 106 samples we recorded earlier, but you know any WAV files will do for this purpose. Say we're done with that. Imports all of those notes. And you can see at the moment it doesn't know what to do with them. But if I right click mapping key text in sample name, because it's uh, a3.wav, it's able to identify that A3 and use that to do the key mapping. So if I select key text in sample name, now it's mapped all of those notes to the correct places. So there's my C3, there's my D3, there's my E3. If I play a C sharp three, I don't get any sound. Why? Because I haven't told it what to do with the gaps. No problem. Fill gaps, pitch only. And now we've got what we did have when we did our recordings earlier. Full keyboard range. Working with samples can be as complicated as you want. If you're dealing with something like that orchestra where you've got lots of notes on a single key, then get, get your spreadsheet out. You know, you've got some processing ahead of you. But if you've got one key, um, one note per key, and you've recorded a simple sound like this, you know, you could uh, go around the house just like with a microphone, banging household objects, get a load of samples, Put them all in a single folder on your PC, drag them all in, map them chromatically, and you've got 88 new sound effects available to you. It's really kind of not intimidating once you get over that hurdle of, oh, how do I get sound into my computer? It's incredibly easy. Just remember the, the sidechain business to get your inputs plugged into Hallion, and then remember to select whatever source that you're actually feeding from if you're doing it um, live. And if you're importing the samples, then it's incredibly simple. Just uh, right click on your um, on your layer and all your, your import options available um, here. So that's the basics of uh, recording and importing samples into Hallion and doing a little bit of mapping. Hope that was useful to you and uh, I hope to see you next time. Thanks very much for watching.